Hey YouTube, it's AC and welcome to the 230th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, and to start off, for those of you interested in winning a brand new Apple Watch in my giveaway, just be sure to rate this video up and stick around until the end for instructions on how to enter because that giveaway is actually concluding this weekend. It will be over on Saturday and the winner will either be announced then or the winner will be announced on Sunday. But either way, it will conclude this weekend, so be sure to get your entries in now. All right, and to start off, let's talk about jailbreaking. First of all, though, I'm going to give you guys a brief and quick summary update before we actually get into everything I want to discuss in this week's episode. And just note that if you're a regular viewer of my videos, a lot of it will be review and some of it will be new. So keep that in mind. But essentially, as of now, there is not a new untethered jailbreak for iOS 8.3, the current latest public firmware as of recording this video. That's just the way it is. And for a number of reasons, I'm going to get into them briefly. But first, if you guys need additional information on anything discussed in this week's episode, then be sure to look for links on the screen now in both card and annotation for Format, and down below in the more info, there will be some links to some relevant coverage there. So essentially right now, it's the calm before the storm. We're waiting for iOS 8.4 to be made available to the public. And if you would have asked me last week, I would have said, well, 8.4 might be expected this week, but that's not the case. It's currently Friday as of recording and publishing this video. And Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference is actually this coming Monday, June 8th. So 8.4 wasn't released and the jailbreak teams are waiting on that firmware. Both are confirmed to be working on new untethered jailbreak utilities after iOS 8.1.3 patched the last Taiji jailbreak. And a lot of people have actually asked me if it's possible that Taiji and Pangu could once again decide to wait even after iOS 8.4 is released. Of course it is. It's their prerogative to do whatever they want with what they've developed thus far. And if we look back, Taiji actually originally promised to jailbreak iOS 8.2. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, the group actually had to wait, primarily due to the fact that they utilized one developer to create their jailbreak utilities, and he, XN, undoubtedly encountered various complications along the way. From there, iOS 8.3 was released, and then 8.4 was confirmed. So they decided to wait and hope for a similar scenario as last year's iOS 7.1.x in the that Apple issued iOS 7.1.1 and then the first Pangu jailbreak was made available, 7.1.2 was out and it didn't close the Pangu jailbreak, meaning it went fully unpatched from its release last June until the fall when iOS 8 went public. So again, that's why they're waiting to ensure the longevity of their jailbreak because what makes more sense, jailbreaking 8.3 knowing that 8.4 is right around the corner and it could patch the next jailbreak or waiting for 8.4, the last known iOS 8 release before iOS 9 and just gambling on the fact that any potential 8.4.x updates don't patch said jailbreak like what happened last year with 7.1.x. So again, that's a rhetorical question, but it's definitely obvious. And now you may be wondering, well, when will iOS 8.4 be released if the next jailbreak is contingent upon said firmware? Now that's a great question. In light of WWDC so close on Monday, we can either expect the firmware on Monday after the conference or shortly thereafter. Looking back, iOS 8.3 was released on Wednesday, so we can likely expect a time frame of this coming week for 8.4's release. Previously, it was expected that Apple would rush 8.4 in light of the text message reboot bug that was discovered that essentially just crashes the device's springboard. However, it appears that that's not going to be the case and that they're going to wait until after iOS 9 is unveiled to the general public. And that actually brings up another point of an alleged zero day exploit that started to go around recently that I actually covered in my last video. However, it's not an exploit, at least it doesn't appear to be considering pod 2 G's joking nature in his response to POSIX Ninja, who said maybe it's a zero day exploit. But because there was an additional context, we didn't know for certain until POD2G replied. Essentially though, a zero day exploit is one that's released prior to the publication of a previously undisclosed vulnerability. But don't really get too excited about this because it likely won't affect the jailbreak community. Same thing goes for the effective power text, which previously was thought to potentially lead to an exploit. However, the crash actually occurs with inside of banner notifications, which is a part of Springboard, which is owned by mobile, which basically just means that Springboard crashes are useless as far as creating a jailbreak is concerned. And remember guys, don't lose hope following the iOS 7.1 patch of Evasion 7 last year 
in June with 7.1.1. Pangu released their jailbreak utility and no one thought that was going to happen. We definitely didn't expect a new jailbreak and we really didn't expect a new team to enter the jailbreak scene either. And a lot of people are suggesting that this is the longest we've had to go without a new jailbreak utility. It actually isn't. The longest was in 2013 when the original evasion jailbreak was patched by iOS 6.1.3 in March and a new untethered jailbreak utility wasn't made available to the public again until December of 2013, again by the evaders with evasion 7. So that time period was nine months. Right now from iOS 8.1.3's release in January, it won't be six months until kind of toward the end of June. So keep that in mind, remain hopeful. And with that said, let's go ahead and move on. Recently, I came across an app that I know a few people who actually use find extremely helpful. It's really great for those of you who are in college or who are about to enter college and are in high school. Essentially, it's called College Interactive. And what it does is it helps to standardize the search process, which means you don't have to spend a lot of time searching the web for various college websites or struggling to navigate through multiple. Everything that you need to know and all of the relevant facts about various colleges are built directly into this single app. And you'll actually have better control over your college admissions experience. You'll be able to create profiles and populate it, as well as to receive interactive messages from the schools that you're interested in enrolling in. And as you guys know, I'm always looking for awesome apps that are kind of outside the norm and outside of various things like jailbreaking to share with you guys. And this one just helps streamline the college admissions process. Next up, let's talk about WWDC, again, which is short for Apple's annual Worldwide Developers Conference. Decorations started to go up recently and guess what they look like the initial announcement graphics that Apple started to send out a few months ago in other words the squares with rounded corners definitely still look like Apple TVs However, the fourth generation Apple TV hardware reportedly is not ready for announcement and release at the conference. Initially, Apple was planning to announce the new device there. However, it seems like they need more time to kind of finalize things with the fourth gen Apple TV, but they've had since 2012, so that begs the question, what have they been working on? Essentially, Apple TV is still expected to be discussed at the conference, but in a different capacity. As discussed during my earlier WWDC 2015 analysis video, I mentioned that Apple TV will act as the smart home hub for all of your various devices, meaning you'll be able to control your smart home devices when you're away from your house with the Apple TV as the hub and as the center of it all. And that suite of features was actually implemented into the device with the iOS 8.1 equivalent update last fall. So definitely a while ago, but we haven't really seen anything come of it until now. So it's expected that Apple will definitely announce some smart home features and showcase some things the device can actually do during the conference. Also, of course, Apple will unveil iOS 9, the next major iOS update, and it's rumored to mostly be focused on security and performance improvements. We'll also see some updates to the default Maps app, potentially some Maps augmented reality features as well. Basically the same user interface, a new font moving away from from Helvetica Nue to San Francisco, which is an Apple designed font, and the alleged proactive feature, which is the evolution of Spotlight that I discussed in last week's episode that's expected to take on Google now. However, I personally would like to see more out of iOS 9. I'd be really interested in split screen multitasking app support for the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus, as well as the iPads. What about you? Let me know down below in the comment section which feature or features you'd like to see in iOS 9. Also, Apple will discuss the next installment to OS 10 being OS 10.11, which like iOS 9 is expected to be mostly focused on security and performance enhancements. We'll also supposedly receive some Apple Watch announcements and hopefully a new SDK that will allow for native apps on the device. And Apple is supposedly working on the iOS 9 equivalent update for the Apple Watch, but it's not expected to be unveiled at the conference. Instead, it will be saved for a later date. And during WWDC, we'll also supposedly see the new Apple Music, which is their rebranded version of Beats Music, which of course they acquired Beats. And the service will allegedly offer a three month free trial. From there, it will cost $9.99 a month. It will supposedly be built into iOS 8.4, along with the other revisions to the music app, though it's said to be separate from the default music app, and it won't have anything to do with iTunes. Again, Apple Music. 
And kind of wrapping things up here as we conclude in other news, AT&T is no longer offering carrier subsidies for iPhone upgrades. Instead, you'll have to purchase the device using their AT&T Next installment payment plan or just off contract at full retail price. And for those of you interested in winning an Apple Watch, it's extremely easy to enter my giveaway, which is concluding this weekend. All you have to do is go to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari and sign up. Then come back here, rate this video up, and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section containing your referral code, which appears inside of the link itself at the fourth tab at the bottom after the equals symbol. I hope you guys like this video. Again, remember, we will receive word of the next jailbreak utility after iOS 8.4 is released to the public one way or the other. If you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google+, follow me on Instagram at ICUID, and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.